Hello friends, Jim here with Science Talk. I want to go through this uh, little summary, you could, you could call it, uh, that appeared in the online publication Human Future. And they, and they identified the mega risk that humans face. This, of course, is, is not intended to be comp uh, comprehensive, but it lays out in broad terms the issues humans are facing, and for that matter, the planet. So what are the mega risks? Eco breakdown and extinction. We'll start with that. Humans have killed off, have killed off two thirds of the world's large wild animals since 1970. We have devastated much of its forests, grasslands, and oceans. We are extinguishing the very systems which support human life and life on earth. That's a correct statement. In fact, uh, I saw some recent uh, graphics where the great majority of mammalian biomass on this planet is humans and their livestock. The mammalian biomass due to wild mammals is drastically shrinking. This is for terrestrial uh, organisms. It's something like down to 10, 15%, if that. The rest is humans, cattle, sheep, you know, that kind of stuff. Horses, pigs. That's going to affect the ecosystem. You have to clear forests to have the farmlands so the cattle can graze. When you take down the, the forest, you are killing the organisms that live there, causing extinctions. Even if it's local, you're still causing extinctions. Resource scarcity. The world is running out of clean, fresh water. We lose 75 billion tons of topsoil a year. We've, we have dropped two thirds of our wild forests. We are emptying the oceans. Now what that means is overfishing. Using up the earth's resources 50% faster than they regenerate. In other words, we're outstripping. We can't replenish fast enough what we are extracting. And clean fresh water. Without clean fresh water, okay, you don't have water, so you die from that. But water's not clean. Diseases. You don't have clean water, fresh water, you can't grow crops. And of course, the big one, hothouse earth. The planet is presently on track for plus four degrees of global warming by 2100. Um, make that plus four degrees probably by 2050. It's probably going to be uh, in the realm of seven to 11 C by 2100. And of course, even an increase of four degrees C would make large parts uninhabitable. By the way, many uh, uh, ecologists state that an increase of four C is sufficient to render humans extinct. Of course, with the increase comes mass release of methane, nitrous oxide, CO2, and so on which then, you know, creates the runaway system to so get more and more heating, ice melt accelerating. Polar melting will eventually raise sea levels by 65 meters. Doesn't say by when, but it will do that. The nuclear threat. The world has 13,400 nuclear weapons. Fewer than 100 could end civilization. Well, if you use them, you're not very civilized to begin with. The threat of nuclear conflict is rising due to continued arms race and dangerous new technologies where robots and AI decide who dies. I am reminded 
of a, an episode from the original Star Trek series called A Taste of Armageddon. And in it, these two uh, societies were waging a war. But there was, there was no rockets, no bombs, no bullets, no tanks. It was all done by computers. And if you were selected, you just simply walked into a distant, uh, distant, uh, this, goddamn, speak, Jim, disintegration tank chamber. Now, if you were selected, you just simply walked into a disintegration t- chamber, and that was it. Walk in, you don't come out. And that's how they fought their war. Until good old Jim Kirk said, nah, enough of this crap. You want a war? Here, have a war. And he blew up the computers, and uh, then they... Oh, you're violating the, uh, the, the agreement. We might actually fire actual rockets. Oh, you don't want that now, do you? You don't want to destroy your cities. You might want to start talking. It's an interesting episode. <laughs> I like it. But seriously, I mean, you know, we have 13,400. All you need is a couple of hundred uh, or less. And you're just about done in the humans. So you have that risk. And, you know, the risk of, you know, if you're using uh, nuclear power, the, you know, the power plants doesn't, something doesn't happen there. You know, that you have a Fukushima or a Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, or something like that. Food risk. The industrial global food system is unsustainable. It cannot feed 10 billion people on a hot planet with shrinking resources. Hello? 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 Right? You cannot, it cannot feed 10 billion people on a hot planet with shrinking resources. Two thirds of humans, two thirds now, now die from diet related diseases. Our food system needs regent reinvention. The other thing is you've got a warming planet. You're losing topsoil. The warming planet is making temperatures such that the plants we grow and depend on cannot tolerate those high temperatures. They wither and die. So what happens? Crop yields decrease. And, you know, the nutritional aspect of what actually does survive to be harvested is less. And you have more and more people. You cannot feed them. You have less crops, to f- less nutritional crops to feed more and more people. Cannot continue. This is unsustainable. Next one, global poisoning. Human chemical emissions are now 120 to 220 billion tons a year, three to five times the scale of our climate emissions. They poison every person on the planet every day. They are a direct cause of many lifestyle diseases and a growing unseen threat to our survival. The chemicals Right, the microplastics, the nanoplastics, we ingest them, they're in our bodies. They disrupt our physiological processes, be it whether the chemicals or the plastics interfering with, say, for example, the thyroid gland, the endocrine system, where, you know, if you're one of those people who has a lucky genetic roll of the dice where it affects you adversely, no matter what you do, you just pack on the weight. It causes obesity due to hypothyroidism or, you know, you know, cardiovascular diseases, cancer, you know, issues with the immune systems, etc. We're poisoning ourselves to death and other organisms. Pandemics, right? There have been seven pandemics since 2000. The rate at which new plagues are infecting humanity is accelerating due to overpopulation, wilderness destruction, which allows the inter- increased interaction with organisms that may be vectors for these diseases, and of course, the worldwide travel and social behavior. Oh, you know, I don't want to wear a mask because it's my right not to. Ooh, you're impinging on my right. Well, it's just a piece of cloth, you idiots. Don't even get me going on the vaccine. Overpopulation. The human population is forecast to rise from 8 billion in 2030 Hello, we just crossed 8 billion in 2022 to 10 billion in the 2050s. This is four times larger than the Earth's estimated carrying capacity of humans at a reasonable living standard. Define reasonable living standard. Well, first of all, 
you know, 10 billion is not sustainable. You're going to see massive die-offs then before that. Four times, is four times, you know, larger than 10 billion? So the base is saying what? 2.5 billion is the estimated carrying capacity? That's an overestimation. The carrying capacity that allows humans to extract resources, harvest resources, while allowing the adequate replenishment of said resources is actually somewhere between 100 to 600 million. I've done, a, I've checked a lot of papers and the, the highest estimate that I saw was 1 billion. So, ten, so even if you took that 1 billion, 10 billion, that's 10 times more. You can, how are you going to supply the resources for ever growing people with, where the resources are, of course, finite? It is not sustainable. Uncontrollable technologies. New technologies like artificial intelligence, killer robots, universal surveillance, nanotechnology, and novel man-made life forms are arriving far faster than society can understand or control. Uncontrolled techno risk is an emerging threat to our survival. I really, I'm, that is not my area of expertise, so I'm not going to say, I'm not going to really have too many comments to say about that, but it does make sense. <laughs> and then mass delusion. The inability of people to understand the deadly threats that now confront us all is the greatest barrier to global action for a safe human future. Disinformation, lies, false beliefs pose an existential risk to our survival. You know, social media sometimes does not really help in that regard. Mass delusion. It's called denial. Denialism. Oh, no, it can't be that bad. <laughs> I like the... the <laughs> What the, the thumbnail that they use there, make him her a great Trump. <laughs> Pretty funny. But, uh, yeah, people just don't want to act. You know, they, they just don't, they, 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 let's face it, people are selfish. They just care about it. They, as long as they have what they want, they're fine. Everyone else can go screw. <laughs> you know, it's basically the attitude of people. But these are some of the, you know, you, you've heard me discuss in greater detail many of these topics over the over the years I've been posting videos. This is kind of like pulls it all together, I guess you could say. But, you know, we're, we're destroying the, the ecosystem. We're, we're over-extracting resources. We're running out of clean drinking water. We're overheating the planet reducing the crops, of course, and, uh, you know, physiological stresses. You know, we're, we're having decreasing food. The chemicals are killing us. Diseases are killing us. We're overpopulated. And we have a, I don't give a rat's ass attitude. That's not really happening. You're just making this app. So anyway, it all comes down to um, right here, overpopulation. Without this massive overpopulation issue, we would have plenty of food and clean water to go around. And with a far fewer people there, there are far fewer people burning fossil fuels and releasing the emissions. Far fewer. So you wouldn't have the hot house, you would not necessarily have this issue, the hot house hours. But because you have so many people, so, you know, inputting so much greenhouse gases, that creates this issue. And too many people are causing mass extinctions, destroying ecosystems, whole scale ecosystems, whole scale biomes. And, you know, the oceans. All that heat energy in the oceans, overfishing the oceans, but that heat energy is really going to bite us in the ass. 
We're starting to see it. The atmospheric rivers of air bring in massive precipitation. The changing jet streams rolling around. These are interesting times, to say the least. So here's a nice little uh, quick uh, summary of how screwed we are. Talk to you soon.